I would cut off your head, dwarf, if it stood but a little higher from the ground. You would die before your stroke fell. One year ago, filmmaker Peter Jackson released the first installment of the Lord of the Rings series. While the films were initially perceived as a gamble, the risk clearly paid off. The Fellowship of the Ring earned more than $1 billion. The latest installment is entitled The Two Towers. And here is the trailer for the film. He is not coming back. The defenses have to hold. They will hold. There is nothing for you here. Only death. There is still hope. Joining me tonight is the film's creator, director, co-screenwriter Peter Jackson, and two of the stars of the film, Elijah Wood, who portrays Frodo, and Viggo Mortensen, who portrays Aragorn. I am pleased to have both of them here at this table uh, to join Peter Jackson, who was here last time a year ago when the first installment was here. Welcome, welcome back. Thank you, Charlie. Tell me about how. Tell me about this one. Uh, where, where? <laughs> <laughs> we thought like, like an hour, yeah. where, where? two hours. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, I mean, what I like about the the f is the fact that we're doing a trilogy of films. So people have to realise this is the middle chapter. Right. But the the thing that I like about it is that it's not a sequel. It's we, we're not in a situation where the Fellowship of the Ring came out last year and it made a lot of money and everyone said, "Oh, good, let's make a second one of these." And we kind of figured out what the magic formula was and we kind of rushed off and made another one. Um, people should realise that this was this was shot as a trilogy. There was nine hours of movie, all shot at the same time. Basically, what two and a half years ago, yeah. nearly now, and that that nine hour epic story has been divided into three chapters. And um, this is the second of those three. And what's chapter two about? It's, it's, well, if you've seen the first one, I assume most people have probably seen The Fellowship of the Ring. Um, the story continues, the stakes go higher, as I think any middle chapter of a trilogy should probably. The, the vice kind of clamps on our heroes and the forces of darkness are, are, are closing in. It's a little bit darker than the first one. It's a little bit more intense than the first one. Um, it sort of ups the, ups the ante, if you like. Ups the ante, meaning... Meaning that things, the, the situation in Middle Earth where our story is set, and our heroes are basically um, attempting to overcome the forces of darkness. Uh, Frodo, played by <laughs> Elijah, is, has a small gold ring which he has to try to destroy in a volcano. Um, Aragorn, who's played by Vigo, has to do everything in his power to help make it, make it possible for, <coughs> for Elijah to, the, to destroy that ring. Um, and they just it gets kind of com complicated and it gets harder for our heroes. Mm. You've already started editing oh, the, the third, third installment. Yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah. yeah the third's my favourite one, so I'm looking forward to that. Elijah said the same thing. What yeah. is it about the third that makes it so intriguing? Um, Cause other than a, it's a conclusion. It's climactic. And the, it's, yeah, it's, climactic. It, it's climactic. It's almost sort of biblical in, it, in its climactic sort of scale, and it's just it's sort of over the top, but in a good way. It's it's highly emotional and. Um, yeah, it's, really, it's going to be my really favorite. Really emotional. I mean, I've seen mm -hmm. bits of it, and I, I can't help but cry every time. I mean, I saw one bit towards the end of the film in the span of I saw it once. Five minutes later, saw it again and cried again. I mean, it's so <laughs> yeah. it's heartbreaking. Wow. What oh. happens to these characters that you have grown to love over you know the course of three years? It's an off-repeated story of how you got this job. But tell us, for those <laughs> of who have not. Why not? Tell, regale us with <laughs> the story us one again. One more time. Um, yeah, it was. So you made your own audition tape. I did, as a result of not wanting to be put on tape at a, a casting office against yeah. a white background. I thought I put on the, the Hobbit costume. You know, I knew he, Pete was looking for an English actor, oh. and I had to sort of basically prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that I could be English. And so I had the odds against me. So yeah. I thought I'm just going to do something completely mad and make it my own and show my passion for the project and for the character that way. And it worked. You know, went out to the woods and shot the scene. What did you see when you saw him? I saw Frodo. That's Frodo. I mean, exactly. It's, 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 Frodo. it's interesting because I'd, I'd, ne I'd never seen an Elijah Wood film at that point in time. I, I hate to admit, but that's no, no, true. no, that's that's good. It's, it's actually true that I hadn't. I mean, out of all the movies that Elijah's done, for some reason or another, I, I'd never actually seen one of them. And so I'd heard of Elijah's name, Fran. Walsh, uh, my partner, had had seen the ice storm, and she and she said, "No, no, you should really, we should really check out this tape because he's a, he's a very very interesting young actor." Yeah, oh, <laughs> right. and um, and I saw and I just saw Frodo. I saw everything that we'd been looking for, and we'd maybe auditioned two hundred Frodos at the point in time. Wow. Where, 
saw his By tape. the time you saw his tape. Yeah. And yeah. did it decide it for you immediately? Yeah. 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 Except we didn't say that to Elijah straight away because no. we had to go and meet him. Because obviously yeah. I never met Elijah and you don't want to work with somebody who you kind of can't get on with. So we had to go through the process of meeting with him up in LA and having a chat. Because yeah. one of the things with casting this film was the fact that we wanted to get actors who were going to stay stay with us for 18 months because you know an actor couldn't bail out at the end of the first film they yeah. had to stay there for three movies so we wanted to make sure we we had well you know basically nice people who you were going to be him, you heard him in spite of that meeting <laughs> no, <laughs> one <I> meeting <laughs> yeah they Get still managed to hire me even yeah, after yeah. yeah thank you pete yeah, it's a pleasure. <laughs> what brought you here uh you know i've never I've never asked Pete that. I'm not sure. I got a phone call to ask if I wanted to get on a plane the next day and go to New Zealand for a year and a half. <laughs> <laughs> and at first, I actually said, I don't know. You know I, don't, I haven't read this book, and, and I'm not sure that, um, that I would do justice. You, know, you don't want to let people yeah. down who are passionate and who are working hard on something. So I was tentative about it at first, but uh, I'm glad I said yes to the challenge. Did you go immediately and read the book, or did, what did you do? I started reading it on the plane. Yeah. <laughs> what have I Did got you myself into? It? By the time no. you got to New Zealand? No, but I read enough actually to realize that it wasn't such a foreign thing to me. Yeah. After all, that a lot of there were elements that were familiar to me. I mean, the sources for Tolkien's writing were not all unfamiliar. You know, a lot yeah. of it is based on right. Nordic mythology, Celtic mythology, sagas, fairy tales. I mean, you can. There's such a gold mine of information in there that. I mean, personally, I could relate it to Western movie archetypes, samurai movies, mm. all kinds of uh, things. And uh, so then I thought, well, this is good. I'm going to pretend I'm a Viking, you know. Like I used to when I was seven years old. And, uh, you wanted to do that since you were seven? So, well, I didn't realize it, but obviously... Yeah. <laughs> you obviously do sing the movie. Yeah. <laughs> all right, take a look at this. This is a, for our first scene from The Two Towers, walking through the mountain. Frodo realizes that he and Sam are not alone. Here it is. Strangely familiar. Because we've been here before. We're going in circles. What's that orange stink? A word there's a nasty bug nearby. Can you smell it? Yes. I can smell it. We're not alone. You're obviously making a political statement with your t-shirt. Um, I wouldn't normally, but this is sort of a reaction to it. I've heard a lot of people say to me, and I've read in a lot of places, about the first movie and increasingly about the second one. I've seen where people try to relate it to uh, you know current situation, uh, specifically the United States uh, and their role in, in in the world right now. And um, I, if you're going to compare, then then you should get it right. You know, I I, um, I don't like hearing. You know, I mean, I, I played a character who's who's uh, defending Helm's Deep. You know, mm -hmm. and um, I don't think that. Uh, the two towers, or Tolkien's writing, or Peter's work, or our work has anything to do with uh, the United States uh, uh, foreign adventures, you know, at this time. And it, 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 it upsets me to hear that in a way. And it upsets me even more that questioning what's going on right now, what the United States is doing, uh, is considered uh, treasonous, really. And how dare you say that, and how un American of you. And really, this country is, is founded on the principle that if the government isn't serving the people, you at least have the right to say, wait a minute, what's going on? And there's no questions really being asked at large about what we're doing. Whereas in, in, uh, in the two towers, you have, um, you have uh, different races, nations, cultures uh, coming together, you know, examining their conscience and unifying against a very real and terrifying enemy what the United States has been doing for the past year is bombing innocent civilians without having come anywhere close to catching Osama bin Laden or any presumed enemies. And, uh, you know, as a, as a distraction, we're now, uh, apparently it's a given. We're hell-bent on uh, increasing the bombing that's been going on for the past 11 years in Iraq. And I don't think that uh, the civilians on the ground in those countries look at us in the way that maybe Europeans did, you know, at the end of World War II, waving flags in the streets. I think that they see the U.S. government as, as Saruman, 
you know. As, as a threat. Yeah, as a threat. And they're terrified and have been for a long time. And, and uh, we are not the good guys, unfortunately, in this case. And Even though it, right after 9-11 there was an extraordinary amount of public support for the United States to do something. I'm supportive of the United States. I'm, I'm an American and, and, I'm, uh, and, I, and I, I have nothing against patriotism. But if one is going to compare, then the comparison is, is quite the opposite of okay, what's Let me being just made. make sure the comparison, only because that, you and I asked you about the t-shirt at the beginning and you said you made it yourself. Yeah. You know, the, the idea, uh, you, you, you object to the comparison of, of this film with respect to American uh, involvement with Iraq or, In or words, the, the Afghanistan United States war and the war against terrorism yeah, yeah. to any comparison with the film as because of your well, the, opposition to American the, the policy. idea is, you know, that com in that comparison is the United States is like the good guys in our movie ag against mm -hmm. the bad guys in our movie. And I think the opposite is true, unfortunately. And we're the bad guys because we well, responded as, to you the, know, the, the, the people the who are terrified at Helm's States. Deep, who are outnumbered in, in, in this incredible violence and desire to control, to destroy the people of Rohan and the rest of the free peoples of Middle Earth. Uh, to control their wills, to control their, you know, infrastructure or destroy it. That's what we're doing in these countries. That's really what we're doing, unfortunately. And it's, I'm not saying to anyone, to you or to you or to you, this is what you should believe. I'm just saying, why not ask the question, why are we doing this? Sure. You know, and I, I don't like the comparison, and I keep hearing it, so I felt like saying something about it you know I'm not really um, a fan of of the saying my country right or wrong I'm, yeah be, well that's an incomplete quote yeah. too um, the rest of it is more reasonable I'm more of a fan of, of saying um, let's make an honest effort to get it right I think the rest of the quote is if we're getting it right let's keep trying to do so and if we're getting it wrong let's try to get it right i think he says something like that yeah. you know? i want to turn from this but I, but it, but let me just stay with the idea for a second though um i mean wh what would you have had the united states do after the attack uh at the pentagon and at the twin towers and i would not have uh, continually bombed innocent civilians from thirty thousand feet with no possibility of being accurate and maiming and killing and destroying the lives of many more people than died at the World Trade Center. What does that do? Does bombing people make us safer? Does bombing people uh, make us more loved or appreciated overseas? Uh, will this be forgotten? Oh, well, it was just well, a little mistake. What if they had been able to stop Al-Qaeda and you wouldn't have had, if there is the connection, which many people think it is, in terms of the attacks in Kenya, for example, or other acts of terrorism against the United States and other countries. I just if somehow that, by responding you can say, because most people believe that if in fact you don't respond you're inviting more terrorism. There's nothing wrong with responding, it's how do you respond. The, the fact that you, one even questions the way that we responded, that that's considered uh, some kind of fifth column thinking, that it's treasonous and that uh, you know those attacks are used as an excuse to to um, limit civil liberties in this country and and you know and that we are coercing other countries whose populations england for example i saw a poll where seventy percent of english people say they are more afraid of george bush than they are of osama bin laden and saddam hussein because we are our government is incredibly violent and aggressive and rapacious, and we want to control those regions. It's beyond a, 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 an attack, you know, a response. And, and, and there are other ways, I would think, of responding. You know, we've done this before in our history. You know, even in World War II, was it necessary to, to kill so many civilians in Dresden and places like that? Was it necessary to do things that way? You know, it's hindsight and so forth. But here we are now. We've been doing this for a year in Afghanistan. We've been doing it for 11 years in Iraq. Can we not think about this? You know, I read in the New York Times, which you have here, I looked at it yesterday, the front page is, it's not even should we do this or is it a question, it's just the countdown, as if it was a holiday countdown for the, the big war and this and that, and then the science or whatever section, it's uh, bigger weapons and faster vehicles for the military, and then photographs of the women serving. It's all kind of fun and it's like the people on the ground in those countries who are the ones who are being affected, they're invisible. 
if they're not American, if they're not European, they don't exist. They're disposable. And more of them have died in the past year than died at the World Trade Center. What does that mean anything? And now just because we focus on Iraq for many reasons, not the least of which is oil. But not only oil. And, you know, some kind of um, vendetta maybe that uh, our president's father has. Who knows what the reasons are? It doesn't really matter. But if you're going to suggest those two, and I know we want to get on. Yeah, and I, I think I have some respect for you for, for the candor and the forthrightness of, I know I do, for, of your views and invite right. you back to this program because we talk about Iraq a lot here. Right. Um, you know, before I turn back. Just a dialogue about it, that's all, you know. I mean, yeah. if somebody wants to compare our movie, which is just a movie. Yeah. People say our movie is a pro-war movie too, which I also have a problem mm -hmm. with. Yeah. You, they, Elijah, you essentially agree with what Nicholas I said? agree with questioning, yeah. absolutely. I agree with asking questions, which I don't know if people do enough in that kind of honest way, Yeah. you know. Let me. Uh, an interesting thing is you make some of these political points. The president supporters would want me to contest each one, and there's no time for me. To, or if you were making, well, if you were making an opposite yeah. political uh, statement in support of the president, then people from the other side would want me to contest it, on, and we can't do yeah. all of that now. But um, we'll come back to some of these as it pertains to this particular movie. Yeah. Here is another clip in which you are being questioned about your presence in the writer mark. Here it is. I am Aragorn, son of Aragorn. This is Gimli, son of Gloin, and Legolas of the Woodland Realm. We are friends of Rohan, and of Theoden, your king. Theoden no longer recognizes friend from foe. Not even his own kin. Peter as a director, how is he different? He has more energy than a barrel of monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> I would say. I've never. I, do, I mean, I, I agree with that. But unwaning kind of unwaning energy, but focus. Yeah. You know, and a, and but on top of that, a calm that I think made made the set incredibly conducive f uh, to giving out ideas and for us to perform as actors. And mm -hmm. and uh, it, he, he created an environment that was. Uh, conducive cr to creativity mm. on a, on a very wide scale. Was the experience know? different than you imagined it might be because you were doing something dramatically different? You were making three movies rather than one. You had a continuum of a story. Uh, you had a company of actors that you were getting to know better than you would normally on a set. Did any of that make this experience different? Oh, yeah, all, yeah, all of those all things. Of those things. <laughs> yeah, all of those things. I mean, normally you'd work on a film. You know, a filmmaker and actors would get together, and often you're working with strangers. You know, it's not it's not often that you work with people that you've actually worked with before, and um, and you come together for maybe ten or twelve weeks, and you know, by the end of ten or twelve weeks, you're just getting to know the person that you're working with. Yeah. You're just getting to understand right, them exactly. and get a, get a shorthand going, and suddenly, bang, it's it's over, and you go. Mm -hmm. And in our case, at the end of ten or twelve weeks, we've still had like more than a year year yeah. of filming still to go. So we just became a really tight knit unit. I mean, I just, I just enjoyed it. I mean, the best experience of this film has been working with people, the camaraderie that you, among the people, working you with work people with. that you respect and admire, and being collaborative. Yeah. Just, just kind of making you it really together. Really have to create like that as well. Yeah. In terms of companies, in yeah. terms of hiring yeah. the people that that would be amiable and good to work with in terms of friendly people, you had a lot to do with yeah. that. I think. shooting it in New Zealand too. I mean, I, and I think Peter's a prime example of. You know, not I mean, not every, but not everybody's the same. No, I mean in New Zealand. Yeah. The fact that we shot it there with a mostly New Zealand crew was, oh, I think, an amazing. inspiration to us because um, I think that you know, you tell me if I'm wrong, but typically yeah. New Zealand, uh, for people in New Zealand, I don't know if it's a result of historically being an isolated uh, country, you know, geographically and having to make do and pull together, but putting the group first and the individual effort second, I think, comes naturally to New Zealanders, uh, yeah. which is also very much what this story's about. And I don't think that, that most New Zealanders need a September 11th or a London Blitz or an earthquake mm -hmm. to put aside their differences and pull together for the common good. It just it comes a little more naturally to them, I think, and maybe to Australians too, I don't know. But uh, and then that helped us a lot. You always felt that you were that it was a team effort, and whenever anybody was flagging, you know, there was just this unspoken bond. You always you felt that you were, you were supported, and I think this movie, you know, the spirit that you can yeah. feel on the screen, 
beyond uh, any special effect, beyond any, you know, uh, filmmaking flourish, there is this gritty, uh, let's pull our socks up, and if you can't do it, I'll help you do it, and because I know you'll help me do it. That is something that in, in large part comes from the people we were making this movie with it's and a, the place yeah. we were making it's it a, in. It's a, it's a spirit. I think the films really do embody the spirit of, of a group of people enjoying what they're doing. Yeah. And, and you know, it's, it's that simple. So would you do this again? Not this particular <laughs> experiment. Oh, now, that, now that's a tricky question. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, somebody comes along and says, Peter, you did that so well. Yeah. I, by the way, have the acquired the rights to <laughs> this other trilogy. Oh, my God. Another trilogy. Yeah. And we want you to go somewhere for 18 months and choose your actors and <laughs> saddle up. Uh, not for a little while. I want to I want to spend a little bit a little bit of time with my family. Okay, but do you also want to do a different kind of movie now after you spend oh, this yeah, much sure. time? I mean, I yeah. mean you, you're not only spending 18 months there, you're spending how many years? Uh, seven years. Seven years of your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. what is it you want? Do you want to go make a small movie or yeah, some I, personal? I, I want to do a few different types of films. I mean, I used to make zombie films once in my, <laughs> in my youth. Good zombie films. I'd love to make another zombie film. Yeah. He's promised to star in my zombie film. You, you, you want to be in a zombie film? A zombie, zombie fan, aren't you? I'm there. You, you are there? there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so we'll see. I, I've got a few ideas of this, but they are, uh, tend to be smaller movies. Smaller. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, there's different skills you exercise. It's like it's you, you know you don't want to be stuck doing the same thing all the time. And um, and I certainly like there's challenges to make a very small drama film, and I'd like to have, have a go at that one day. What are the skills? That, how are the skills different? Just as a director, how are the skills different? Um, oh, it's just the size and scope of things that you've got to think about. I, I think it's, I mean, it's, it's, like it's keeping, it's keeping um, your your eye on on the on the big picture. I mean, I, I, the physical aspects of shooting for that long were okay. The mental exhaustion kind of freaked me out a little bit. I. I I used to, uh, at the beginning of the shoot, I used to be uh, someone who could think of ten things at once and conduct ten different conversations yeah. at the same time. And like, if you spoke to me on the last day of the shoot, after 18 months of shooting, I, I, I actually said to somebody, this, this must be what it's like to be 85 years old, when I can't remember what I did yesterday and I can only, <laughs> I've got such tunnel vision, I can only think of one thing at a time because I lost my ability to be kind of, to, uh, to think of From anything just more than just fatigue and stress. It's and mental fatigue, yeah. yeah. I mean, I was, you know, after a bit of rest, I was all right. But um, it was kind of weird. It did grind you down. I want to get another clip in here before we go. This is where Sam, Sean Austin, tells Frodo uh, they have to escape by using the ring. Here it is. Put it on. Disappear. I can't. You were right, Sam. You tried to tell me. Sorry. You came in after replacing an actor who'd been, what, fired? Yeah. Fired. yeah, so, yeah is that so hard? Sorry. Was it difficult? Did you were well, nervous well, about my it? My understanding that it was that it was more or less mutual, and I think it was uh, an unfortunate situation where someone who was too young. You know, for the part, they needed a, sort of an older dog yeah, to play this state. part. <laughs> and you said, I'm your older dog. It's Steps Vegan. Yeah, so yeah. I was a, uh, in retrospect, it was a lucky break. Yeah. And um, is, this, mm. is this a career changing role in film because it's got making so much money, because it's gotten such an enormous uh, viewership, and because of three of them rather than one of them? Well. Peter, do you think? Uh, I mean, you know career, career wise for me or, yeah, well, or for you sure I mean me I know I don't want to change I just want to keep doing my stuff in New Zealand and do whatever I want to do it's I don't want anything different it just gives you a chance to make another one right you didn't screw this up so you can make another one yeah and if I don't <laughs> screw up the next one I might get get to make my little zombie film <laughs> <laughs> but for you I mean is this already has it made a difference in terms of what you see the kinds of things that are available I mean my regular everyday life is pretty much the same what's your I'm regular a, everyday life like well I guess you could say I don't get out much <laughs> but, <laughs> but as far as something that uh, you know uh, that I have noticed and I'm sure you have and probably you have too is that there's these big piles of fan mail that you, yeah. you now get and I'm sure everybody it's just a function of being yeah. part of a popular movie and um, you know I've gotten finally <laughs> I've gotten another job that I would not have gotten, I'm sure, if it weren't for being part of the Fellowship of the Ring, you know, it's purely because of that. Otherwise, someone's not going to take a chance on you uh, sure. in a leading role. So I'm, I'm grateful for that. But otherwise, 
I haven't yet noticed much. Hmm. What's your next role? Uh, it's a movie called Hidalgo. It's a, based on a true story from yeah. 1890. Elijah, how about you? Uh, I've sort of the same in terms of what's happened. You know, I think that there is an increase in things that come your way, but nothing crazy. And in terms of my daily life, that hasn't changed at all. But I, it's mainly of my own effort. I don't stop. You know, I, I don't stop doing the things that I would normally do on a daily basis because more people recognize me or anything mm -hmm. like that. You had a lot of people, Peter, come up, I mean, I'm especially thinking of Harvey Weinstein and Bob, and saying, you know, they, they as you and I talked about before, we went in mm. at length about this relationship. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit like the war, wasn't it? <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I mean, they must be deeply regretful now that they're only getting 5% of the back end. I, I don't know. I think, um, I mean, the reality ultimately was that they could have never have afforded to make the films at the budget level that they had, yeah. to, had to be made. So I don't know whether regret's quite the right word. I don't think they ever really had a chance ultimately to make them. Um, five you know, five I, percent of a billion dollars isn't bad for no, not having set no. foot in New Zealand during the whole shoot. <laughs> I'm sure they ha they'll be very happy with their 5%. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, Is that 5% of the gross or the net? I'm not entirely sure. I don't know, I don't know the, de the detail. I've heard 5%, but I don't know how, how okay. the deal the, um, is structured. Were you disappointed not to get Best Director last time? Uh, not really. I, uh, I kind of... We called it, didn't we? You I called mean, it? Awards. I, I, just, the awards. I just don't... I, I found that the awards ultimately last we year were in a very... A very political sort of. I, I, I just found myself in the middle of, of, of this kind of these warring factions and the politics of the Oscars. I, I, I found to be very interesting, and um, because I had to come around, I, you know, they sent me once once the nominations were out, and we were kind of like there was a sense, right? We're all fighting for yeah. the for the Oscar, and I had to come and do a three week um, tour around the states to like you know to promote myself and promote the the movie and. And if we got nominated again this year, I swore to myself that I'd never do that again. Because uh, I kind of think the, the Oscars are a very simple system where, you know, a very pure system where you, there's 5,000 people that vote and they simply vote for the movies that they like the best in any given year. And that should be, ba that should be where it starts and finishes. It's very simple and um, that's fine. And whatever film gets the most votes or whatever actor gets the most votes, that's, that's the winner. But the idea of, of the way that people start campaigning for votes, like you're a politician, I, I found to be a bit, a bit odd, so I, I promised myself I'd never get involved in it again. In making this movie, um, you obviously made a ton of choices. You made choices about casting, choices about uh, a lot of stuff, yeah. and choices about narration and voices. And li mm -hmm. What was the su most surprising choice you had to make, the most difficult choice you had to make in, in all that you have had to do? You know that turned out to be, you know, extraordinarily satisfying <laughs> in the end. Well, I guess the um, one of the one of the key choices that we made very early on was that we wanted to make these films feel historical and feel real because they were, they were fantasy films, which fantasy for a lot of people means you know fairy tale, mm -hmm. children's stories, right. all that sort of stuff. Um, and fantasy movies of the past tend to have an artificial kind of feel to them. They tend to be over-designed and glossy and bright and gaudy and, 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 and unreal, basically. Um, you know, fantasy means unreal. Yeah. Uh, and I thought, well, no, let's do fantasy means real. Let's say that these are historical. Let's say that, that the events of The Lord of the Rings took place on Earth six or 7,000 years ago, as Tolkien himself imagined, and that these, these have a, a reality to them. And whether you're an elf or a wizard or a hobbit, or a human, you, you're, you're playing your character with integrity, you're existing in the moment that, you know, that the story is, is the forces of the story are upon you, you're making decisions based on who you are. Anyway, there's nothing sort of artificial about any of it. It's, it, it, it has a certain grittiness. And um, that was, I think, a key decision we made right at the beginning, which I feel very happy with, mm -hmm. um, because I think it's given the films a, a quality which sort of sets them apart from other fantasy movies that we're, we've been seen in the past. Do you share the feeling that the third <clears throat> is the best? Having seen the first and the second movie, I, I wouldn't even dare to <laughs> guess what I would feel, much less what it's going to look like. I don't you have no idea what it's going to look like. No, and I was you there, know. but I don't know. He, <laughs> Peter Jackson is uh, full of surprises, and I think it's a good thing. He doesn't... Um, I mean, I, I am in agreement with the way of working that I think he believes in, which is 
never, it's not over till it's over. Never quit trying to improve what you're doing until it's on the screen and people are seeing mm -hmm. it. And, and because of that, you know, he's full of surprises and I'm sure the third one will be, you know, a surprise. And it makes it more fun to go to the movies, more interesting. So. Sure. All right, but let me just end with this. Did, was there any, any significant disagreements on the, about this film in terms of where it should go? I mean, did you have agonizing choices to make about that or did it just lay itself out directly from the uh, book. This was a tough film. I mean, this, the post-production on this film has been very, very difficult. It, it's, it's, been, it's difficult because it, it's, it's, structured in a, it's, it's structured in a way that's actually quite hard to put together as a filmmaker where you have three storylines because our characters have, at the end of the first film, they, our group of characters divided into, into, and went their separate ways. So you have three different storylines following different characters all progressing at the same time. And that makes the editing of the film and the assembly of the film very intricate and very difficult you, because you, you, you're trying to keep each storyline alive and keep the tension going and then when you cut to the next group of characters for a while you don't want the energy to drop out of the group you've just left and you want to be able to stick with them and then have the energy and the energy build when you go back to them again and doing that through three different storylines is, is hard. So this, I, I did find the post-production on this film to be much, much harder than the first film. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good to have you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. See you next time.